and we should be all go here we are um uh, you'll be able to see it in in a few minutes uh, james and joe right we are live hello welcome to band of badgers i'm dave your host for this evening and this hopefully if it's all working is a live <laughs> q a uh, with red grass games um and with us is uh, our, the community manager uh, james regan how you doing james I'm very well, thank you, Dave. Thank you for having me. That's all right. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to to have a chat. And it's somewhere in our own time zone. How for precious once. is 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 that? <laughs> yes. um, it, we are. We we talk to people all around the world, and it is so nice to have finally people. When, when we say it's nine o'clock, like yeah, it is. It actually <laughs> is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's one o'clock here. It's, it's, it's <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us. Now, um, for those of you who've, who've never been to one of our Q and As before, or if you're watching it on YouTube. We're going to be talking about uh, red grass, various kind of products and, and accessories that they do. Um, we're going to talk about the current Kickstarter, which right now it is. We are literally the first of June. I don't know why I had to check. <laughs> we're literally the first of June. Um, I think you've got nine days left to get involved in this Kickstarter. It's a great Kickstarter. Do check it out. We will be throwing uh, the link. Steve is already ahead of me. The link is already in live chat, so go check that out. Well, well um, done, Steve. And we'll be talking about all other kinds of things, uh, painting tips, um, manufacturing tips. We've got paint brushes, paint holders. We've got uh, wet palettes, all of this kind of stuff to, to have a look at. So and so, if you have a question, do just check it, check it into the live chat. Joining me as co-host this time is Joe. Uh, you would have known Joe if you've been watching our stuff from Annihilation and Avernus. If you haven't watched any of our stuff, you have no idea who Joe is. Um, and most of us don't, anyway. Go watch um, Avernus. <laughs> go watch Avernus, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Joe is our in-house resident painter, and he joins us. We have a painting show as well, the, the Great British Brush Off. So go check that out. All of it can be found on YouTube. And I dare Steve to get... He didn't do that. Um, you'll find the YouTube link in live chat in a second. Now, also with these events, uh, we'd like to do giveaways. Uh, James at Redgrass has been very uh, generous in giving us some giveaways to do. We will be giving them out randomly throughout the show. But um, as we started to introduce uh, in our last Q&A, if you um, send in the best question into live chat, you will automatically win. James will pick it automatically, there and then. He will pick oh. a question. You will win one of the giveaways, okay? Um, I'm not going to tell you what they are. We're going to we're going to we're going to get to the unboxing, and then we'll we'll tell you about what what you're up to for winning. But um, stay with us for that. So now that all that uh, is out of the way, uh, James, over to you. Tell us more about Redgrass Games, and tell us more about yourself. And Joe's what? just hanging off screen while he's painting. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's commitment I to the cause. Can't can't put the brush holder down <laughs> i mean if that isn't an endorsement i don't know what it is <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so basically red grass is a relatively new company on the hobby scene um you know barely four years old uh swiss swiss based but uh it was actually the brainchild of two french brothers uh fabrice and vivian massad um who still run the company to this day although vivian is sadly very sick at the moment with covid but we hope it gets better soon. And basically, they had grown up uh, as board gamers and miniature painters. And after kind of separate but successful careers um, in advertising and consultancy and things like that, they said, we want to we want to do our own business and we want it to be something around an area we're passionate about. And of course, that was painting minis. Mm -hmm. um, and Vivian especially was a very committed painter and he was always trying to find new ways to make painting more enjoyable because um, there are some onerous aspects to painting that we can't escape especially when you're painting with things like acrylics um, and so the the first big kind of innovation was the wet palette if you've ever used acrylic paints you know how frustrating it is as soon as you take the paint off the pot you've got a very limited amount of time before it starts to dry either on your brussels uh, on your brussels on your bristles and it will ruin your your brush. Yeah, you definitely don't get paint on your brussels. You certainly do not. <laughs> um, even if they are water-based. Uh, <laughs> <and, laughs> or you put it on the model and then, you know, it's dried mm -hmm. in about 20 seconds if you're lucky, um, which is very frustrating when you're batch painting or if you're trying more complex techniques, which I think these days a lot of mini painters are keener to try. They're, they're keener to try mm. those kind of advanced eddy metal techniques like edge highlighting, glazing, 
stuff like that. You just can't do it though when you do paint straight from the pot. Um, and so that's where the wet palette came from. It, it, it was a need to try and make painting easier and more enjoyable. And so when the wet palette had been a big success and you know there were lots of imitations and there were lots of big name miniature painters getting behind it, they're like, well, whatever areas of the hobby can we improve? And so um, that's where the handle comes in, which uh, Joe has been glamorously uh, showing off for you this evening. Look at that. <laughs> Um, you and you know, hand, it, hand model, Joe. Yeah, I'm just going to show off my minute hands there. Hands yeah. dishes. <laughs> got, covered in paint, that's the, <laughs> my hands are. Well, at least you know it's sincere, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, often the innovations are very kind of simple, ingenious ones. Mm -hmm. it's, but I think that's because it comes from a place of it's, it's by miniature painters for miniature painters. Yeah. You know, and it's not, it's not some distant think tank just trying to imagine something it's it's a guy sitting at his painted desk going how can i make this a better experience um and then i joined red grass this year um i left teaching um i well, i had been doing an ma as a sort of sabbatical from teaching um and i was really enjoying my own miniature painting and my own kind of social media experience and i was like oh, i'd love to do this as a job Mm -hmm. and um redgrass posted an advert this year and i was like i'm just gonna go for it just just see and yeah have a look back it's been awesome um so yeah and i get to combine my my passion with my career mm -hmm. which i did, think is is wonderful out of interest did you already know redgrass did you already kind of um mm -hmm. use their stuff and you just because you've been following them on social they yeah. post up, like, yes I'm yeah so free, it's, it's quite free stuff <laughs> and free stuff and a job <laughs> yeah um well yeah i uh i actually backed the first wet palette four years ago wherever it was and so in the interview you know when you get that very generic why do you want to work here question mm -hmm. i just kind of leaned over on the webcam got my my wet my old orange wet palette I was like, <laughs> i've had this for years it's covered <laughs> in paint like and th that was a uh, i think that probably was the thing that got me the job you know i was a sincere elevated fanboy <laughs> yeah cool we've already got some questions coming in as well um we i'll, I'll skip that one because it's uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that with a uh a close-up cams um, uh, oh man there's so many questions right is the is the is the palette fully portable is the palette fully portable is that the question? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the question. I would say yes. Um, hmm. I think it might be easier to bring up if we go through... Should I just, should I just crack open the box? I have a box here, everybody. Hey. And if we just crack <laughs> that open, that might be easier because then we can hmm. have... A lot of these questions are actually for uh, the wet palette itself. So I got I got a wet palette, everybody. Uh, so did Joe. Um, <laughs> if he picks these up, he said it will fly everywhere. So, <laughs> so, well, that's the thing. It's like, how much... Um water should like so if i tip it on its side should water pour out is the question yeah so it is of course significantly less portable when it's full of water and the lid is off so yeah. you know <laughs> context matters yeah. uh, keep, keep the lid on but yeah um, but, so um, in in the state that it's in there that dave's got it now with the yeah. sort of band that comes strap, with it yeah would that be is it watertight then or like sealed air? yeah 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 um there so is, i mean i was gonna say there is a it, it's there's a rubber seal on the inside. Yes. Um, a, a rubber overlap, which you're not going to be able to really see that way. Um, yeah. But I can, I can crack it. It's in there. So, yeah. So this is oh, on everybody. This is what we got. I'm on the small camera. There we go. Um, uh, yeah, we'll, yeah we'll Baron, Baron, you are correct. I have already been using mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so I, I have, you know, in the few years that I've had my orange one that uh, Dave is showing off now, um, I have transported mine across country to paint in different locations. All I would say is if the foam is moist, like if it's damp to keep your paint wet, that will be fine. If it's swimming in water, just get rid of the excess water before you travel. Um, and, you know, where possible, keep it, keep it stable. Mm -hmm. I know that's not always possible, but yeah, if it's not swimming in water, the seal that uh, Dave kind of showed you there should keep everything in one place. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't want to tip mine upside down anyway, because I've got paints on the 
on the membrane yep. and I turn it upside down, they might come off. So yeah, as long as you're careful, yeah, absolutely portable, very, very portable. Um, and we're looking at ways in future of making that version of the pallet more portable. So like, you know, you can have one in the studio and one on the go, because obviously people do move around a lot to paint these days, you know, mm. if you're going to tournaments or whatever. So uh, yeah. Yeah, painting in the hotel room the day before your tournament. Indeed, another <laughs> rock and roll Friday night, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go, it does have a, a, an inner rubber seal, as you can see there. So it does have yeah. like an, an inner, inner lip, and that, it goes in very snugly uh, yeah. into, uh, into that, if you can see. It's very, very nice. Um, so th this, um, again, James and Redgrass were, were very generous. They sent uh, one to myself, to Joe and to Steve. Um, so you'll be seeing these on Brush Off as well when uh, season three kicks off at the end of July, I think. Uh, I think you'll, you'll see it, yeah, season, uh, season three, the Great British Brush Off. Now with this, and this all comes in, in, the, handy, in the handy box, um, mm. this is a whole bundle deal. You do actually get um, two of these membranes, uh, which are, well, uh, James, can you explain the membranes? Obviously, they, these are the bits that hold the water. Ah, yes. So for clarity's sake, I will call those foams. Yeah. Um, because actually we've got something called a membrane in the new Kickstarter, and I don't want people to get confused. Uh -huh. right, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so those foams there are mold resistant foams. You use those instead of a sponge. A lot of people who have a D DIY wet palette, for instance, would just use a kitchen sponge. I know when I first made my own wet palette, that's what I used. But obviously they go moldy quite quickly and the water retention can be quite inconsistent. Um, the foams are basically just designed to make that process more reliable. So get them nice and wet. Um, you can wring them out a little bit just to make sure that they're not literally swimming in water. Mm -hmm. um, and then you would put either your hydration sheet or if you back the new kickstarter the new membrane over the top of that um and then you're you're good to go you're ready to paint um it works by a kind of capillary action um, but it's very controlled so the water is allowed to move through the sheet and keep your acrylics wet but not so wet that they kind of basically turn to a wash without you wanting them to yeah um and so a lot of this obviously has been refined over the last four years so that the Kickstarter wet palette that's going on now is an even superior kind of refined version of what you're seeing here that Dave is showing. This is actually, Twitch. I mean, that's, that's probably about five mil thick. Um, yeah. And that's, that's actually really nice. Yeah. So the, the foam in the new Kickstarter is a couple of millimeters thicker. Wow. Just, okay. just so that, you know, it lasts <laughs> even longer before you need to top up the water. Yeah. Um, the, obviously the new membrane is very different to the hydration sheets that you get in that current pack. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we, we can talk about that if, if people want to ask questions about that. Um, um, we've actually got so, some questions in. Yeah, Baron Snowhands has got a question. I've sure. kind of had a question along the same lines of it, so I'm going to kind yeah. of expand on it a bit. Sure. Um, he says, how long does paint in the palette stay viable to use? Mm. And my question that would add on to that is, I've heard some people say that you have to like store them, it's better to store them in like fridges and things like that. Mm -hmm. Is that correct or, or is, it, is it fine to just leave? Them? So we recommend not putting them in the fridge. Um, I know that, I know it's quite a popular tactic. The thing is, obviously in a sealed environment, you will get things like condensation. And so they say, well, um, I need to leave the lid off a little bit to stop condensation. But obviously if you leave the lid off, mm -hmm. paints will dry out. Um, I mean, slower than they would without a wet palette, but they will still dry out. Um, we say not to do that because actually the, the, the main thing that causes condensation is temperature change. So if you take your room temperature wet palette and put it in the fridge, that's actually going to cause far more condensation than just sealing the wet palette. Um, again, you know, just bef when you're done with a session and you know, oh, I'm not going to paint for the next couple of days, just drain off a little bit of the excess water that's in the bottom. So long as the, the, the foam is still damp mm -hmm. and the paint on top is still damp and then you seal it and you keep it in the room where you're painting, it should be fine. You'll get maybe a little bit of condensation, but not so much that it would ruin your paints. Mm -hmm. So I think the fridge thing, it could have even started like because... Like an old wives' tale. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, and I'm, I have no doubt that for some people it works. You know, at the end of the day, creative expression is very subjective. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, some people are going to find things that work for them that don't work for others. Um, but in terms of how much water you should use, again, that depends how you like your paints. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally just like the foam to be damp. I don't like it swimming in water. But if you like that kind of watercolory style, if you like really thinned paints, almost to like a wash consistency, then by all means, you can definitely, you know, keep topping up the water whilst you're painting. Um, and just have it kind of sitting in water. Um, but just make yeah. sure you change the water because that's not healthy otherwise. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's horses for courses. I'd recommend not doing it, but lots of people do it. And it's absolutely fine if they do just keep the water changed. Otherwise, that's where you get things like mold and and broken, broken uh, paints. Um, I was going to ask by uh, are the hydration sheets for multiple use? Yeah, so that's a big reason for the new Kickstarter was that the sheets that um, you see in the current packs um, that Dave has been showing us, they're pretty much one and done. Um, You know, they are fancy, but they are essentially fancier baking parchments. Mm -hmm. You know, once they're soaked with water, they will start to lose their tensile strength and they will fall apart. Um, So once you've filled that up, with paints and whatever you will have to replace it which is why there's like 50 in a pack um but the new membranes are reusable um they're made from a much tougher uh material that you can wash again and again and again i've had the same reusable membrane on the go for five six weeks now um and the longest stint it went i painted one saturday i left it for two weeks i opened the palette again and the paints were ready to go as if it had been two weeks ago. Nice. Um, you know, if you look at any of the kind of big painters that we asked to test them, you know, people like Angel Giraldes, mm-hmm. you know, um, David Basilisk, all that, you know, they've really been able to wring 10 hells out of these new membranes and they still go. They're still nice. good. So um, I personally, I think the membranes are great in terms of efficiency. So, um, I was going to say, you mentioned uh, a few things there. So not only do you get in the box as the bundle do, yeah. you get two um, of the hydration things. Uh, I, I say things. Uh, mats, foam pad. So we get two of these yeah. um, individually uh, packaged. We get a pack of 50 of the hydration papers on top. We get this lovely orange box, but we also get... <laughs> As you mentioned, Angel Heraldes. Oh yeah, um, is the book. Mm. Now this, there you go. Red Ross comes everlasting wet palette, miniature painting made easy. Now I, I, I have to, I have to say, well, anyone who's seen our Great British Brush Off will know that I am a complete amateur when it comes to this. But this book was, was fantastic. Um, so this is written by Angel Heraldes for Red Ross Games, um, yeah. and specifically for the palette. So there it is. It's featured. Um, and everything that's in here, how to use it, uh, what what you get with it, how to fill it up, which is, I, I had to read it. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm putting in too much water or not, not enough, and all the various mm. accessories that you can buy, mm. because of the paintbrush, the nippers, uh, the paint handle, and all kinds of things. But it's a really well put together book. Um, there's a lot of, the pictures are, are great, breakdown of information which i loved yeah. to see yeah we also mentioned color theory um, yeah. which is also nice to see and various things that you can do with your uh with the wet palette that's there um uh the dilution ratios again really really handy for when you get to those kind of next stages and you want to do more things and the well fr- in so, yeah in so many i mean that's a great one that's a great example in so many videos painting tutorials people talk about wash consistency mm-hmm. or glaze and it's like well but how do i do that it's just kind of implied that you know what that looks like but if you're a beginner you don't um and so we thought it was just really helpful to make it as obvious as possible um there's no shame in not knowing it's a shame that previously there was no way to find out yes so um that's why it's all there and all this is just part of the bundle what what was this um what is this currently retailing for james Ooh, uh, that's a good question. It, of course, it depends on your location. Uh-huh. Um, so obviously we're dealing with uh, GPB. Uh, so I think that's about £25. Like that. there's, there's a couple of very similar packs. There's one with the book 
and one without. The one without has more accessories, like the wavies, I think. Whereas this one with the book is slightly cheaper. So, um, yeah, and then equally, if you go onto Kickstarter, uh, you can get a lot of this stuff for about 30% off the retail price. It's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, just as a little incentive to back the new wet palette. Um, and we'll be doing an updated version of that book too. So um, That's quite a gonna add in... discount as well. I mean, 30% off mm. of the, the whole bundle you get for the, the Kickstarter. I mean, that's pretty much why I got into Kickstarters is literally because the, the amount of money you can save in the long run um, yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, and, you know, unlike some Kickstarters where you back and then you forget that you've backed because it's so long before you actually sort of get what you're wanting... Yeah. You know, the, the ambition is to have everything sent out to backers by fall. So October, November time, all depending on, you know, COVID and whatever. But mm -hmm. it's, it's it should be a relatively short turnaround. You know, everything's being made in Europe, uh, which will cut down logistics a great deal. So once you've backed, you don't have too long to wait for a Kickstarter. Uh, we have another question about uh, what's the difference. You've talked about hydration sheets versus membranes. What are the main differences between the V1 and V2 of the Everlasting Wet Palette? And what new features are there? Mm, a big question. Um, so obviously, yes, correctly identified that the uh, sheet membrane thing is a big difference. But the uh, seal um, that Dave mentioned already, uh, that's a big difference as well. So um, it's actually a brand new design. It's, it just does not exist anywhere else. <clears throat> it's it's completely novel. Um, it almost looks a bit like teeth. Um, and it's basically going to guarantee a tighter seal, but it's also one that's easier to operate. So if you look on the Twitch uh, circles now, you can actually see uh, Vivian's opening the wet palette with one hand, mm -hmm. which is not, not something you can do with the, the current designs. Um, so the, the plastics are newer. They're, they're mm -hmm. more flexible, but they're tougher. Um, the seal is a lot tighter, so it's a lot closer to being airtight and watertight than any previous designer wet palette. Um, we've gotten rid of the magnets. We've simplified the design a little bit just to make it basically more efficient and more reliable, especially with the accessories you can add on the sides. Um, so any of you, uh, any of you wash and ink fans will love the new anti-spill holder, which is being previewed right now. Uh, so no more spilling contrast or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there, there's a there's a horde of there's hordes of changes, um, but we have listed them all on the Kickstarter. Or if you go onto our socials, you can see the videos where we've kind of broken down mm -hmm. some of the key changes. It's not a frivolous reskin. Let's sell the same wet palette again. It's basically re-engineered from the ground up. And you can clean the. Um... Paper. I'm trying yes. To so the, the new word. membrane is membrane. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So the new membrane is reusable, and so all you have to do is you know, run it under the tap, or get a damp cloth and just wipe it off, and then it's good to go again. So you know, you might need fifty hydration sheets or, or baking parchments. With a membrane, the same kind of span of time, you probably only need five or six membranes. You know, angels use the same membrane like 15 or 16 times by now. Um, you know, we've been very modest in our campaign. We've said minimum for four reuses. Yeah. But, you know, if you know what you're doing with care, you can get way more out of it than that. Um, and it's and, larger as well, right? A lot of things. Yeah. So, you know, some people have said about the orange wet palette, it's a bit small, um, which makes it great for portability. But maybe when you just painting you need a bit more space so the version two is a bit bit larger a bit wider um and so yeah but it keeps that kind of efficient foot space because sometimes when you're hobbying desk space is at a premium mm -hmm. so we're like how can we give them more painting space but not taking up the whole desk so that's where the new version two red lid comes from mm -hmm. it's uh, just that kind of balance between a bit more painting space but not taking up all your desk now we have, um, like uh, again, just just for the audience who who may have just turned up, um, if you have a question, we, we get loads of questions coming in from from the social, which is great. If you have a question, if you stick it into live chat and James sees it and thinks it's a good question, 
Mm. You'll you'll automatically win a prize. So we are doing we're doing several giveaways, which, as I mentioned, um, here is something else we're going to talk about. So this is another product from Redgrass. This is uh, Redgrass Games 360 degree ergonomic handle for miniature painting. With a new, this is the new swappable cap and magnetic dock edition. Now this, um, I've, I've already cranked it open because obviously, like <laughs> yeah. Joe, I've already had a play. Um, so inside, you get the painting handle, you get a branded magnet, which is a, has a free and sticky bottom on there, and it. it I'll, sh I'll show you. If you heard that, that is lovely and <laughs> it's strong. It's a good strong magnet. It will, it will keep it. Uh, keep it nice and firm anyway. It's not going anywhere. It, exactly. You get some putty with it as well. Um, and a detachable head, which allows you to kind of, as you're painting, you can spin mm. with one hand. Uh, so you can rotate the model, which is fantastic. Um, you know, really easy to kind of uh, mm. use. Ergonomically made. Uh, James was telling us earlier before we came on that this was going to be... Uh, how do they make this? You said the engineers come up with this just in, in clay? Just yeah, it. so basically they were holding uh, bits of clay to just work out what the kind of ideal grip would look like. Um, I think they've been inspired by some uh, gaming console handles, mm -hmm. which obviously do have the human hand in mind. And also, like a gaming control, you do tend to be painting for a very long time. Um, and a lot of painting handles don't really seem to take that in mind. They're just like straight up and down. And like, well, actually, after a while, that can be quite difficult to maintain. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, they were looking at gaming controls inspired by that, and then they just got lumps of clay and just started holding them and going, right, what's it going to look like? Because, I mean, to look at it, you think that that's actually quite small. Yes. But actually, you put it in your hand, it does fit <laughs> really well, incredibly well. It's, it's actually quite comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, being able to spin the top round is really handy as well if you're playing. Yeah. Oh, it's a game changer. I mean... Um, yeah just thinking about the kind of gymnastics that people have to go through to like paint yeah like yeah <laughs> yeah and again you know after prolonged use you you could be getting strains and rsis and all sorts so just the simple addition of being able to flick with your thumb to the next bit that you'd yeah it's amazing it's a simple change but it's a really important one so, so here, here's something i mentioned to james before so uh before we came on it we were chatting about this so the the, the lid um, because of that rubber, uh, the rubber seal mm. around the edges, it means on my glass desk, I now have a non-slip. So I mean, I'm actually wiggling the screen rather than moving the the mat. And then I thought, well, here's the disc, here's your magnet, a bit of metal goes on there. We stick that down, and then there we go. Now I have a complete <laughs> non-slip painting tower. There we go. Hey, look, I've just invented something new. Jobs um, are good. I don't know if I actually invented that. I probably didn't. But hey, <laughs> I'm going to claim it as mine. So I think it's, that is it's, a, it's a world first. Yeah, there we go. It's a the inside of the lid actually was initially designed to be a dry palette. Oh. Um, because they just weren't sure if, if the miniature painting world was ready for wet palettes. Yeah. And they were like, how can we sell this to, to skeptical people? And they're like, well, mm. if you take the lid off, you've got one side for wet palette and one side for dry palette. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, as it as it turned out, I think people were just quite happy to accept wet palettes. Yeah. I've never ever seen anybody use the inside lid as a as a dry palette. That's cool. So um, yeah. So not only um, also, I mean, you can also buy additional. Whoops, you can buy additional for that as well. So you got two additional heads um, mm. and more uh, putty in a pack as well. Yeah. Um, which are fantastic because, and I, I have, I'm not at this stage as a painter yet, but basically you put your putty on, you put your miniature on, and then you pop this off, you put that down, pick up your next one, put it on, load and start again. So while yeah. I'm waiting for that to join, you can bring it back. Or if you're doing what Joe does and doing loads of uh, Warhammer, um, all of the same kind of uh, color things. Yeah, yeah. Batch painting. Batch painting. Yeah. Batch painting is so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> Just in uh, twitching, twitchy in chat there. You see, he's already the non-slip badger. There we go. We put some black and white stripes on there. Um, so we got a question go. from uh, World Docker. It says, uh, "Is the palette suitable for a wet palette newbie?" I am reasonably, I'm a reasonably good painter, but I've never used one before. So would this be suitable for me? Ah, oh. oh, will yes, of course. <laughs> um, and especially if you get the bundle um, that Dave got. 
Obviously, it's got the painting guide as well, which has been designed especially for wet painting newbies, not necessarily painting newbies, although it does help them too, but especially how do you get the most out of your wet palette? Um, so, yeah, I think with so much painting as well, and this is not just a red grass issue, I think just all of us as miniature painters, I think we all need to be a bit more daring, you know, and we have to try new things, even though it's a bit scary, and even if we worry about failing the first 99 times, um, just try it experiment i think that's how we get better as painters is when we try things that we're not familiar with um i think that was a really good question Ooh. i don't know if you agree but i think Ooh. Yeah. it was very candid and i think it was informative for other people who were Ooh. perhaps thinking that, it but not saying it is that a is that a winner will did we all <laughs> just win I think, I mean, if he's going to get into wet palettes, he might as well get into good handles as well. Exactly. Okay. Well done. Yeah. So, Will, you have, basically, you have just won uh, one of these painting handles. You get, the, you get the set, you get the magnet, you don't get the, you don't get the orange, just mine. Uh, you, get, you get the putty, <laughs> you get the handle, you get the magnet, you get the uh, bits on top. So, well done, Will. Um, if you yeah, get in touch with Steve. a disco, we will um, make sure you've got your, we need your postal details, Will. So mm. make sure that Steve, a moderator, has your address and phone number for shipping details. Okay, so um, do let Thank you for the sure question. Mm. Well done, Will. Will see, I'm, I'm reminded of when I was a teacher, you see, and it always took a very brave student to ask the question that everybody was thinking, yeah. but, like, nobody wanted to ask. So you, you've, really mm. got to, you've really got to reward those people that dare, you know? Agreed. He says he's got a Vindicare yeah. assassin. With that, oh. hand, with that handle's name on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to want to see it after it's done. There you go. Challenge, Will. You win. You've got to can, prove how you can, do For the wet palette, can you use metallics on it as well? They... That's a very popular question. Um, I mean, I have, but I didn't think to check whether I could or not yeah. before I did it. <laughs> to be, I mean, I did it all the time. It, it became an interesting question during this Kickstarter that we've got going now, um, because people are like, with the old hydration sheets, I found it really hard to use metallics, mm. um, because obviously the, the baking parchment, when it gets wet for a prolonged period of time, it breaks apart. The metallic flakes seep into the water and the sponge, and it's a nightmare to get rid of them all. Um, so, yes, you can use them. Just make sure that your sheet is regularly changed. Otherwise, when it breaks apart, you're going to have glitter everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. With the new membrane, um, they don't break apart. So it's even easier to use metallics on them. And actually, I found it's easier to revive them on the new membrane. Nice. Um, just a dot of water on your brush and then put them back when it looks like they're starting to go jelly. Mm -hmm. And that brings them back to how they were before. So, yeah, it's even easier to use metallics on the new membrane. Um, yeah. Nice. Okay, Good question. So, uh, Unfortunately, you've already got a handle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the other things we've got here is, uh, again, uh, Red Grass being very generous in sending us uh, the, the orange palette, the handle, uh, and the set is, they to do brushes. Um, mm. Now, I, I love the fact they come in individual tubes. I've never seen that before, but I'm new to this hobby, so maybe, maybe they do. I don't know. But these were lovely lovely brushes uh, this is the number two brush uh, who's the uh do you actually manufacture these or is this a partnership so it's kind of a partnership so um we went to uh, basically the, there are people called brush masters wow. which is hella impressive um you have to like bow to them my lord <laughs> <laughs> very much so yeah <laughs> uh and you just go uh, we would like some premium brushes, please. And uh, you're one of the best in the biz, right? Um, and so, yeah, you go to a brush master and you, you basically tell them your specs and they make it work because it isn't as simple. Well, well, we found out it's not as simple as just saying, well, I really like this brush this big. Can you make it this big? Mm. Apparently, there's a whole different technology involved in doing it. So, um, yeah, it's uh, a German brush master. Uh, I know that much, but everything else is shrouded in an arcane mystery. <laughs> <laughs> and these but, are available um, on the, uh, on your website as well to, to purchase? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's and you can get them as add-ons, and yeah. they are part of pledge deals as well so, at a nice discount. I don't know if you can see it, but the, the point on it, oh, I'm trying to get to it. There we go. 
Ah, uh, yeah. Super flying as well, which is... Yeah. So that's yeah. the double O, um, which is fantastic for, for little details. Mm -hmm. um, we don't make that many brushes currently. We're, with, we're just starting out, really, with brushes, and we just thought, well, what are the most essential ones that every painter needs? You need a size two as a kind of workhorse brush, do all your base coating with, maybe your washes, and then, yeah, you need a double O for things like fine details, and then you've got a dry brush because... You know, it's a very underrated tool, the dry brush. Um. <laughs> so we've got uh, my Winsor Newtons have suddenly got some competition. Um, <laughs> looking forward to having a nice set of good brushes. I usually make do with the cheap stuff because I'm a monster. The ones in the <laughs> Kickstarter will be my first good ones. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is a thing, right? It is a thing that happens is the kind of pro versus anti premium brush mm. debate. Uh, I remember writing a blog post that went on and on and on about this because I thought initially it was just going to be a simple discussion, but actually, no, there's there's way more to it than that. Um, but, yeah, personally, I prefer, depending on what I'm doing, obviously, depending on what I'm doing, I prefer just a, paying a little bit more for a brush that I know will last a long time. So, you know, I've had an, art, an artist opus brush, for instance, and it's lasted me like mm -hmm. a year and a half. Um, I've had one of these red grass ones that's lasted me two years. Mm -hmm. A Windsor and Newton, um, they last a really long time as well. Um, I'd rather just do that. And I know because you, you build a relationship with a brush like you do with, say, a fountain pen and you, mm. and you learn its ways. And so even if it's not the finest point in them anymore, two years later, you know how it works. You understand it better. If you get a synthetic brush from online for very, very cheap, you know, you might only get two weeks out of it. So it's like, have you really saved any money? Yeah. Um, maybe not. We've, we've got a, a, a voice in chat at the moment. It's uh, Josh McGuire from the McGuire Review. Uh, based over in the States, he has a, a review channel. So he does board games, miniatures, role-playing games. Uh, and he's just put on there, if, um, if you're interested in, again, spreading the word for version two, um, yeah, you know, once it's out, um, he, you know, he's got a great following over there. Um, oh, fantastic! Loves to uh, show off all these extra like, little bits and pieces. DM me, hun. Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or maybe ask Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll hook up. We'll, we'll be Hit fine. Me up, yeah, fam. Hit me up, fam. Um, yeah. So, so that's, that's all fine. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to give one away. Um, pick it up. What, what should we create? What should we say red grass? Uh, so. Steve, if you if you're listening, moderator man, um, we're gonna do a competition. It's exclamation mark, red grass, all one word. Uh, so I'll let Steve tell us when it's ready, <laughs> and then um, and then we can go for it. We've got another question. Are you thinking about doing any sort of cl like brush cleaners or anything like that? Um, I know I've got like some soap. Yes. Um, um, basically, not really. Um, if only because all of these brushes can be cleaned with um, things that you would clean your own hair with. So oh, yeah, if, you've got, if you've got a bit of shampoo, just cool. just warm water and a little bit of soap. Any soap, actually. Uh, hand soap will be fine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because we're mostly dealing with things like Citadel paints, which are water-based acrylics, which yeah. are actually very gentle. Um, yeah. So, so they're not... Vallejo as well, I suppose. Is the... Vallejo's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Scale 75... Um, yeah, all, all of those are yeah the only thing you have to be a bit careful with is metallics um but i mean i've used things like dark star metallics and yeah just rinsing it under the hot tap normally does it for me um i do have brush soap but not as a red grass thing just as as my painting mm -hmm. thing but yeah you don't need any fancy brush soap with these just just any soap will do cool J just to clarify it as as <laughs> i didn't know steve you've got to be more clear on this <laughs> um, so Steve is in chat saying right, it's exclamation red grass games if you've already done it correctly you're fine don't do it again <laughs> if you've done it red red grass don't do red grass because uh, that's the command word but basically you'll be in for a chance to win this literally you've got about a minute to get your entries in pay attention to chat Dave <laughs> hey, I've got a lot of stuff going on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, there's not Maguire's got an, uh, just uh, made a suggestion that'd be good you know with your new sort of slide in locking parts on the side to get yeah. almost like a um a cup for water for cleaning ah. the yeah yeah that is a good idea yeah 
Nice. Mm. Thank you, Maguire. Yeah. So, are we ready? To, I'm, I'm assuming we're ready to go, Steve. Let's let's pull <laughs> again. Has, uh, exclamation mark! Red grass games, all one word, to win a painting handle. Um, we're also, if you if you've never been with us before, we need your um, name, email, shipping address, and a mobile phone number, just so for shipping, because they can track you. And they can tell you where it is. Like if the person's got it, if it's, you know, seven stops away or whatever. Just uh, make sure you, you get that in. Steve, when you're ready, pull the one arm bandit. Let's pick a winner. And what else Good. we have is let's have a quick chat about something suave. Well done, hey. something suave has won. Nice, dude. Well done. Well done. Right at the end there. You got Enjoy. The gate was closing. Well done. So something suave. Disco is our moderator. Uh, we'll need some details. He'll whisper you, message you, you know, send you smoke signals. You know, weird, funny noises in the middle of the night. Um, but just give him your name, email, contact details, shipping address, everything. Um, I'm still, well loving that, still loving that model. So, so sick. Which one, sorry? <laughs> so, oh, the Dark Eldar looking one. Ah, Drazar, yeah. So, <laughs> Master of Incubi. For, for everyone who's, who's watching, the, the artwork we have down um, the right side of the screen, um, that is all painted by James. James is also a professional artist, um, but not just a community manager for Redgrass Games. Uh, but also a professional artist for all these miniatures. Um, do check out his Instagram. His, all his uh, artwork there is fantastic. James will also be joining us as a professional artist on some upcoming stuff. We have, you, If you know us, we've got the, the great British brush off. He's going to come on as a, one of our judges. But also, uh, we've got these new technique specials that we're going to be doing. And uh, uh, James will be back towards the end of the month, middle of the month, mm. towards the end of the month, doing some uh, techniques with us. Now, Very exciting. Um, let's just have a quick look. So we, we've been talking about um, the Kickstarter. Let's just see if we can bring up the trailer. Um, well, uh, what I do, I let it play because we've got some funky music in the background so everyone can hear that. I'm going to turn the music down a little bit just so you can hear me rabbit on because we like that. And we're going to talk over it now. Ooh, ah. But now <laughs> you can see the orange one becoming the red one. Yeah. And you can see the size difference. We've got the, the new connection so that. To clarify, the magnets are out. They're gone. And the, the click ons. The, what was it? What was it? Click on. Slide and lock. Cartoons? Yeah. <laughs> is the, is the, uh, the map going in? Is that because you think that you found them to be more sort of stable and secure than the Basically, magnets? yeah. Because with the magnets, sometimes you could shake the thing and, and the magnet would loose. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this, it's a lot firmer. I do, I, do, I do actually feel mine up from the tap. Yeah, I so do I. Yeah. yeah. But obviously, you know, someone like Angel, obviously they, they kind of deal in very specific techniques and he knows what he's I talking love, about. I love so the fact he, he is so pro. He's just, he's just he's probably it. using like... Um, yeah. So what we do... Tears we'll, of an angel. We'll just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's bring Te back tears back. of an amateur painter that will never get as good as... <laughs> <laughs> Another failed student from the workshop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so again, highly portable. But here, I'll pause. I I will have power. I will pause the oh. trailer. But there you can see. So there's the orange one. Um, although now yes. I've stuck my magnet to mine. Um, yeah. might be Committed. Exactly. Um, but you can see the size difference, and that's not the extra large, is it? You're going from orange no. to red, and then the blue yeah. is the extra large professional version, I believe. Yeah. So the XL Studio. Um, mm -hmm. is the same size across both versions. It's just that the new Kickstarter version will have all the kind of new kind of googars that we've talked about tonight. Um, but it will be the same size because um, obviously we found a lot of studios and especially kind of pro painting batch painters, mm -hmm. they really needed that extra space because um, they could paint lots of things at once. So if you like that, the XL2 has got your back. Um, Personally, I prefer, a, I do have an XL, but I do prefer the smaller footprint of the version one. So I'm very excited to, to kind of go into the red lid one. And I'll probably turn the orange one into my oil paints palette. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. So we, we let that roll through. So this is interesting as well. It's got a textured base, for extra grippy. 
the slide on uh, side docks. How many docks can it fit? Because the current orange, we have uh, one, two, three sets of magnets on the, yeah. on the current version one. Is every edge gonna be, um, have the new clip on? So uh, I think it's uh, th uh, four. Yeah, I think it's four. four. Okay. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't be less. So it's, it's gonna be three or four. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can have two anti-spill pot holders and the <clears throat> the uh, old wavy that we had for like ink, mm -hmm. ink washes and things. Because um, obviously people do ask, oh, well, can I use my shades and things on the on the wet palette? And you can, um, but personally, I just like using the, the little ink wells that come with a wavy. And we've got some more accessories planned uh, for the near future, mm -hmm. and they'll all be fully compatible with this. So you can kind of swap and change whatever you like. If you want three anti-spill hol holders, you can. Mm -hmm. If you want one of each, you can. You, you know, as you choose. Mm. Cool. We got the prototype trailer running again. So just be aware, everyone. Um, this is a prototype that you're seeing in the trailer, hmm. and not the final product. And these are not my hands. <laughs> this is not me. This is the trailer. Dave, you didn't need to tell them that. I know it was yeah. our angel. It could have been so secret. I, yeah, I'm no. angel in disguise. I really am angel. That would have been really so cool fingers. if I actually was. And then we started, you know, the well, amateur off paint season and we killed it. <laughs> Angel. Just one stroke. Oh, done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they're all rinsing me in, brush in the chat for not winning brush off last season. So. Yep. Are Steve, you out for Steve revenge? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the new membrane. It's one sided. Yeah. So, uh, but it is labelled. So, okay, that was the other thing was that I kind of just put it down on my one, and I was like, I hope this is the right side. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, with the old kind of like baking parchment type, it doesn't matter what side you put down. Um, with the membrane, it's one sided because that helps with the moisture control. Mm -hmm. um, right. But if you put the labelled side onto the water, you're good to go. Cool. So what um, yes. I was going to ask you about more about your painting. We had um, a few more questions yeah. come in about that. Who are, are you currently taking commissions, or who was your first paid commission? Was it a company, or were it individuals? Yeah. Wow. Oh, that is a good question. Um, I don't tend to sort of take commissions like army painting because I I hate painting my own armies. <laughs> uh, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, you know, for the right price. Um, <laughs> So um, I, I, I love painting for companies, um, especially, you know, if they're, if they're doing their own Kickstarters, if they're new companies just starting out, um, I really like to kind of give them a little boost. Um, so, you know, if you, if you know of companies and stuff, just, just tell them to email me or, or DM me or whatever, and we'll talk. I just like the challenge of something new and, um, so my, what was my first commission? I think it was Gatefall. It was a board game by Jack Dyer. Um, and he just messaged me out of the blue and, and was like, I really like your style and I've got this new board game coming and would you like to maybe paint some of them for cons and I'll take them round. Mm. Actually, that never happened because of COVID and things. It was all locked oh, down. Oh, no. Um, but I mean, I said, oh, well, if you send me a couple of the miniatures, I'd be happy to give it mm -hmm. a go and, and big, them up, big them up on the socials and stuff. And um, he ended up sending me all the miniatures. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, I had a great amount of fun doing that. And I was like, why don't I just do this all the time? Because I don't really enjoy kind of painting other people's ultramarines for them. Um, so I kind of just have a very informal rule of, you know, I do commissions, but when they're like really interesting mm. and they're kind of pushing my artistic Buttons kind of endeavor. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 We've got a question about the Kickstarter page. Um, it mentions the Hobby Light um, for Kickstarter. Yes. It, you've got it forecast for the middle of 2021. Uh, it's basically around a, a general question. Can you give us some more information about this? What might be included? Hmm. Does it have any uh, features or extras? The lamp. The lamp itself, yeah. So um, I guess a big thing about the lamp is that, again, very much like our first wet palette, it's kind of the first of its kind in terms of it is for miniature painters, by miniature painters. Mm -hmm. It's the first on the market. Um, and a big thing was 
how can we make a better lighting setup for miniature painting? Because often, I mean, myself included, we're all using bog standard lamps, yeah. um, which aren't actually that good. Um, they're either too warm or too cold. Um, they might not be bright enough. Um, they often create as many shadows as they eliminate. So perhaps one of the most exciting features, I think, as, as exciting as anyone could get about a lamp, uh, <laughs> is, hey. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm on the clock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but, you know, genuinely a novel uh, innovation is that it's actually not one lamp, it's two independently operating LED strips. And they're on like rotator cuffs. So you can you can angle them all sorts of different directions from each other. So you can have one angled onto the miniature you're painting and one angled behind it to eliminate all the shadows. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah. Oh, I believe... get it. Yeah, okay. Now I understand. I was trying to work yeah. out it's, yeah. So you're basically getting a much cleaner... Mm what it actually would look like under sunlight, except if you've ever tried to paint in sunlight, it's impossible. Um, you're getting a much na more natural view of what you're actually painting. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of kind of tech spec stuff like color re rendition mm -hmm. index. It's, it's the closest any miniature painting lamp has ever come to a hundred. Well, like the, if these days, if you get above 70 out of a hundred, it's really good. This one's going to be in the high nineties. So it's it's going to be leagues ahead of anything that you can get elsewhere. Um, and again, it's, it's kind of sleek and cool looking and mm -hmm. it's very light. And you get those big LED strip things that take up your entire desk and then you can't really move your arms. This one's all kind of fully articulated so you can move it out of the way. So you is can it, actually... Is it on a clamp or is it on a stand? Uh, I think the, the intention is both, basically. Okay. You, can, nice. you can decide um uh don't quote me on that one but uh, <laughs> all um, the pictures i've seen is it's uh a bit, it's been both so uh, they kind of uh the development is stalled a little bit it's at the physical prototype stage it's just a guy vivian who's been testing it obviously been really sick with covid so we've kind of lost about two weeks on our original intention but we are still hoping to get it out for a kickstarter this year as someone that huddles around a halo light and squints i am yeah. all for that yeah, <laughs> I feel your pain. Uh, we have got a couple more questions in chat. If you wanted me to, yeah, you well, got we still got one more thing to give away, right? Yeah, we, we got we got a little bit more. Well, this is the thing. There's a question from Dark Abyss Keeper, mm. and he he, he basically yep. says, uh, "What do you recommend for painting larger miniatures and busts? Keeping large amounts of paint in a palette, or trying to color match smaller amounts that are kept workable?" Oh my god! What a question. Well, I, I was just saying that to me sounds like a great question. If oh, only yeah. we had another one of these to give away. <laughs> but, uh, James, it's your call. You know, <laughs> Dave, I, I second your implied there, motion. There we go. To reward that question. So not so dark, dark abyss keeper, Mister Keeper, um, or Miss or no, Miss or keeper. keeper. You could well yeah. be. Um, <laughs> Not only is it a great question, which you will get the answer for in a second, but you get to win! You won! Yay. Look, you won. This is the painting. I'll, I'll swap the cameras. Then we can see. Um, this is the painting handle. You get this and you get some um, putty to put on top of it. You get the, the magnet to put down. Um, I love winning. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, oh, I hate winning. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Free stuff. <laughs> Damn it, what um, again? <laughs> so, so Dark Abyss Keeper, Mr. or Mrs., Ms. or Miss, um, just let us know. So Disco is uh, our moderator. We will need your shipping address. We need a shipping address, phone number, email, and full name. Um, so if you're happy to, to win one of these, uh, James can get them sent out over to you. Well done. Congratulations. So again, yes. great, good questions. Win yeah. prizes. Yeah. So, and, you yeah. know, I love answering questions that kind of relate directly to myself. So, you know, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> it's, it's always a winner. Uh, well, you know, it, you know, it, it relates to my personal painting experience, which mm -hmm. I'm obviously more comfortable talking about rather than, you know, what's the average weight of one of the magnets? Um, <laughs> yeah. What is the average weight of one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh Monty Python. Uh, uh, so the question was keeping large amounts of paint in a palette or trying to color match smaller yeah. amounts that are kept workable. Basically, um, 
the whole kind of dichotomy is less of an issue with a wet palette. Um, I, I paint a lot of large scale miniatures and, and resin busts and things. They're kind of like my dessert because I paint a lot of 28 mil scale Warhammer just kind of day to day. I like to do those as kind of treats and challenges and things. So I, I do paint a lot of those and I really enjoy them. And there's lots of pictures that you're seeing that Dave put up. Most of those are large scale miniatures. In fact, about, probably about half of them. Um, I would put all of the color, the one block of color that I need on the wet palette and just use that one color until it, until I don't need it. Um, and then start adding in other colors, but with a wet palette, it's less of a time constraint because it's going to be kept wet for you anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I, I would say keep a large amount of paint on your palette. Use all the color that that one color that you need. Um, the palette's going to help you a great deal. Keep it fresh um, and then move on to the next colors because yeah, color matching is very difficult to do. Even if you know, you know, the exact ratios that you used, even a slight variance, could kind of ruin your fun and ruin the finish. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that one personally. We also had uh, another question in chat regarding uh, the, it's coming back to the book. Okay. Yeah. So this is the book that you get in the bundle. Um, oh God, I've lost my question now, there it is. Um, there's lots of beginner tips in this, in this book that you get with the bundle, with the Palette yeah. version one bundle. Um, is Redgrass thinking of doing more booklets? Is there, are you going to increase in like advanced progress, like tier yeah. system, like um, a library? Yeah. Mm. Um, is there something more you can expand on? Is there something planned for the current Kickstarter? Yeah. So the so the book that you will get with the the, the pledges on the Kickstarter is going to be a version two anyway. Cool. So between Angel and myself, we thought of some extra things that we could put in you got to team um, up with him properly yeah wow. um so we've not even finished doing it yet but obviously that's going to be a plan for the summer is whilst the actual palettes are getting made we can work on the book mm -hmm. um which is really cool but um yeah i mean a, a big reason why i was kind of brought on at red grass was to kind of be the resident kind of painter in-house painter guy um and so i don't know whether we'll have lots and lots of books all the time but we are like planning to have more kind of tutorials and mm -hmm. blogs that are beginner friendly and tutorial based mm -hmm. so that people can refer to them all the time you know they're always going to be free you know you'll be able to download pdf versions to keep etc it's all about it's all about supporting the community and and trying to be you know helpful so it's the answer is kind of yes and no it's like we, we are going to be doing more stuff like that it's just not going to always be books. It's going to be, you know, free access, easy access stuff. Okay. Fantastic. So I hope that helped. <laughs> just goes countering uh, me asking you for lessons, I see. <laughs> Constant battle between me and Steve for uh, brush off. Oh, I see. <laughs> Um, I, I kind of touched on it beforehand, um, but a lot of your stuff that you paint, you do do a lot of like object source fighting with. Yeah. Um, did you find practicing on larger models easier to learn how to do that rather than doing 28 mil or did you start off small and work your way up? I started small and worked up. Okay. So um, I think it's one of those uh, great myths of, of miniature painting is that if the model is bigger, it's easier to paint. Um, and the, the real answer, I think, is uh, a lot more nuanced than that. Yes, some things are easier to paint, like eyes. Um, some things are a hell of a lot harder to paint when they're a bigger scale. Like if you've ever tried to get an even skin tone mm. over a 75 mil or 90 mil bust, it's a lot mm. harder to do than it is at 28 mil. I suppose you've got to fade further up and things like that as well. Yeah, you? and suddenly blends don't look as smooth. Um, and, you know, things like under lighting and shadows become much more important over a bigger scale. So, um, yeah, I started small and worked up. I used a dry brush and I used some green paint from Citadel and I um, did OSL on Nighthorn chain rasps. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's a tutorial about that on my Instagram, in fact. Um, and that's how I started with OSL. And I really enjoyed it. And I was like, I want to do more of this. I think it might be my favorite thing. Mm. So I ended up just doing more and more and more and like finding different ways to do it 
uh, how it would work on different models. Um, and yeah, that's that's why you see so much of it in my work today. I just really love that kind of play of light and dark and shadow and, and things like that. I just find it very interesting. And it's, it's almost like an instant atmosphere. Mm. With OSL, you don't necessarily have to do this whole massive diorama to kind of paint a whole scene. It gives like movement that. almost on yeah. like life to it, I suppose, as well. Absolutely, agree, yeah. Um, and just working out how the light diffuses over a space, I've just always found very interesting. So and is I've... most most of it dry brushing, or are you, I suppose, I'll go, I'll go and watch your, your tutorial on your Instagram. <laughs> <but like. laughs> so dry brush, the dry brushing method, by which I mean I use a dry brush, it isn't actually mm -hmm. dry paint. Um, that's the easiest and quickest one to do. But I mean, for the more advanced stuff over large scale, what I'll normally do is a quick spray, either with a spray can or with an airbrush, just to work out where the light hits. Okay. And then I might do something like glazing. Right. Because um, obviously that is more time consuming, but with light, you do want those blends to be really smooth and, mm -hmm. and glazing is perhaps the, the most surefire way to ensure that. Um, but yeah, so, some things it's just a dry brush. Um, we had um, uh, we had another question come in. Uh, not not a question, but they were saying uh, again. This is Dark Abyss Keeper. Um, yeah. Uh, eyes. So in the, in the in the booklet is yeah. how to paint eyes. Yeah. Just saw how to paint eyes. I'll take those pages. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. um, and it is. It's. I've I've been over this, and I'm I'm actually going to be practicing this fairly soon. Now, some of the things we've got going on at Band of Badgers is we mentioned James is actually going to be coming on as a guest judge on the Great mm. British Brush Off um, for later in the month, but uh, at the end of July for season three. But before that, we're going to be doing some uh, what we're calling technique specials. So James is going to be joining us uh, towards the end of June for to do weathering techniques. Um, but before that, I think it's actually next week. I need to double check the calendar. Uh, it might be next week. Uh, Leia Robertson will be joining us to how to paint eyes. So uh, join us next week. It will be live. We'll be here back on Twitch doing a technique special. And then two weeks after that, James will be back. Uh, again, live, teaching us how to do weather painting, uh, weathering effects on, on miniatures. Um, so join us for those as well. Um, but yeah, it's these are some really good techniques if you're mm -hmm. interested in how to do eyes. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Well, you, you, you know, you'd be hard pressed to find a better teacher than Angel. Yeah. Um, but I've, been, if... I've been following Angel since just before Christmas. Yeah. Um, when we were kind of really getting into our stride with uh, the Great British Brush Off. And it's, yeah, his stuff has been, he, he he's literally amazing. Yes, um, yeah. We Easily one of the yeah. world best, yeah. We are definitely still trying to get him on, on um, but yeah, there's a, a slight language barrier, which we need to yeah. see if we can do, see if we can fix. But, but um, if anybody's watching and thinking, oh, I need to get my hands on that book, obviously version one of the book that Dave has right now you can get as a PDF already off our website. So it's obviously, I mean, I enjoy looking at a physical copy, mm -hmm. um, but if you need those tips ASAP, mm -hmm. you can just get an electronic copy of this straight away. Nice. Um, so you don't have to wait. And then version two obviously will come first as a physical copy to the backers of the Kickstarter. I've had another question. What's the hardest mini you've ever painted? And also what's the easiest mini you've ever painted? Ooh, ooh. Uh, easiest one, probably those chain rasps. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was, you know, um, necessity being the mother of invention. I had hordes of chain rasps. I hate batch painting. I was like, how can I get through these as quickly as possible? If I do a boring paint scheme, I'll get bored. If I do a hard paint scheme, I'll get tired and burn out. And I was like, well, ghosts, spooky glow, that looks fun. Um, and so I kind of just devised this, this dry brushing OSL method. And, you know, you could paint one, chain rasp in a couple of minutes and it looked really good like really effective especially as a group mm. on the tabletop so that was probably the easiest one and then the hardest one uh i don't know maybe um in terms of technical difficulty uh, pro probably um jane czar the, the howling banshee um that uh, I don't think you can actually see on the previews 
because it's cut off. But you've got you've got Drazar on one side and Jane's are on the other. And well, I he, did her... he comes on the next screen, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll keep that circling, circling. Yeah. So I did her, but I did her as a kind of chromatic, non-metallic metal, and so working out where all the reflections from the ground would hit the metal, where glazing in all the light stuff was quite tricky technically. But I mean, I did enjoy the challenge and I was very mm. happy with the result. Um, so, but in terms of like what was most difficult to do, it was hand painting a Sisters of Battle Rhino, which I free handed over the entire surface. Oh, wow. Um, um, so I did scroll work and like an icon and all sorts and it took forever. We've been asked what your Instagram is because I don't think we've got it. So if ah, MJG underscore you, paints. Could you, if you could whack it in chat, that'd be cool. If, uh, Dave, just, just go, you know, there he is. <laughs> hey, thank you. Hey, there we go. I'm, Very helpful. I'm ahead of Disco. This is, this is unusual. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a whole wealth of stuff on there and I've got tutorials and things if people want stuff. Last year I did a lot of Necrons. That went down really well. I did a kind of black and red dark mm -hmm. ron scream, I, a scheme I called it, and people really took to that. So I, you know, I put tutorials up on that and stuff as well, and all sorts. Have, um, have you I, ever you know, done anything that you went, no? <laughs> Is there anything that's been impossible? Like, yeah, just yeah. No, it's too fiddly, too much detail, or just gone, no. Yeah, all the time. Um, <laughs> really. You know, yeah, oh, there's an elephant's graveyard of um, of half-finished things. Like, either I burned out with them, and I was like, I've done as much as I can enjoy or learn from this miniature, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to finish it, realistically. So, you know, either it goes in the display cabinet, but it's angled to such a way that you'll see the bit <laughs> that looks really good. Um, or, you know, it goes in a, in a tin or a box where it was like, uh, you know, it was mm -hmm. the... And obviously that is the danger of social media is you only ever see the polished, uh, you know, the, the best of. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not to say that you don't learn something. Like, Calm Seas never made skill sailors. Like, you should fail at miniature painting because that's when you really learn. Um, and if you're not trying new things and mm -hmm. failing, then you're not learning new things and getting better for the next one. So, yeah, I've oh, there's, there's hordes of minis where... Yeah, like I say, a real elephant's graveyard. <laughs> it goes uh, in the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've never quite been that drastic and destroyed them. But um, I think it's important to keep them. You know, Duncan Rhodes used mm. to keep... Yeah, there's the like, famous image of the first one yeah. that he painted that looks like a melted space marine. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's good, though. It, you know, it yeah. keeps you humble. Um, and, you know, you really appreciate that it's a learning process. It's a journey. You just don't wake up one day and you're a perfect painter, nor do you stay a perfect painter. Like it's a constant process. You know, it's up, down, spaghetti hoop, whatever. You know, you just don't get better over time if you stop or you think you've stopped anyway. So mm. um, yeah. <clears throat> I was going to say Dark, Dark Abyss Keeper again. Uh, a good question. I would just follow anyone. <laughs> who shows disaster paint jobs? <laughs> Come to mm. band badges. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, just got loads of stuff on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, Dark Abyss, if you don't know, we the the uh, Great British Brush Off show that we have, we get judged at the end of it. Now, I am complete amateur, and uh, so is Steve and Joe, basically. Um, but, yeah, yeah, there's some horrendous things. It's all live for your enjoyment. So, yeah, but it's basically, can you paint a mini in an hour and a half? <laughs> Short answer, no. Uh, no. <laughs> you can if you're really quick. <laughs> yeah. If you do chain rafts with a dry brush, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you can you can find uh, a load uh, uh, on our YouTube channel. So go and check that out. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Lucy Trueblade. Lu Lucy Trueblade. True yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for following. Um, Kind of along the same lines. So Dragon Dragon's Fire says, kind of along the same lines. What's your favourite or most satisfying job? Ooh, that's a good question. God, we've run out of painting handles. Uh, oh, <laughs> we could get some more if you want. Well, it, 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 you know, you you set the bar. Um, you are the community manager for Redgrass Games. Yeah, that's, so that's this is James. He he's our guest. Yeah. Hi. Uh, let's yeah, let's chuck in some more. That's you're the fine. boss. You sure are. Go on then. Yeah, we got some more paint handles up for grabs, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, yeah, so jump why in. not? 
Um, yeah, so most satisfying job, I think, is actually, again, one of the preview ones that Dave very kindly put up. Um, and she's called Sienna Star Killer, And she's got a massive sword uh, behind her head. It was uh, one of my first large scale resin miniatures and i got it from black sun miniatures uh maybe two years ago now um and i just remember seeing the preview of it i was like my god that is gorgeous that's like one of the best things i've ever seen and i knew i wanted to get into large scale miniatures so i was like oh, it's got to be this one and um, i spent a good three or four months on it like going doing a little bit going away hating it coming back falling back in love trying again and then after the three or four months, like it wasn't, you know, golden demon winning, but I was super proud of it. I still enjoy looking at it. It's on a display, like a cloche, I think they're called, like a display bell. Mm -hmm. It's oh, it's on yeah, the shelf. The, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I wonder, uh, yeah, I might even be able to, <laughs> like, I don't even have my models tool. downstairs. Um, <laughs> but I do have her downstairs just so I can st still see her. I don't know if you can. Wow. Am I even showing you? Yeah, it's coming, yeah. It's coming through. Yeah. yeah. Don't, oh, yeah. All so, you yeah, hear this is uh, as it drops. There you go. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Seeing yeah. alive. So, quite yeah. large, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah. But I still really enjoy looking at her. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that sword is huge. Oh, I, lo I just love a woman with a big sword, you know? <laughs> Like, if, if you're a miniature company and you want me to paint for you, just be like, look, here's a woman with a big sword. I'm like, yes, sold. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's two other things that, that popped up in chat. Um, first was, uh, so that was a question from Dragon's Fire, Dragonfire. Um, does she win? A is that a good enough question to win? Yeah, yeah, totally. All right, Dragon's Fire, uh, get your details over to Disco. He's our moderator for this evening. Uh, we're going to need a shipping address and phone number from you this time. Because this is a fiddle. You don't get a PDF copy of this. You get a real, <laughs> real version for a change. Uh, you get a handle plus a magnet plus some putty, uh, the painted handle, all that kind of st cool stuff. Um, and then also, I just noticed in chat, Lucilla Trueblade, did you see what she said about me? That was fantastic. She said, yep. Dave is the first person to get that right, the name, on the first try. Wee. I never get names right. No. I am Dave's legendary for not doing <laughs> <laughs> we played a drinking game at our Christmas special, so every time Dave said a name wrong, we had to have a drink. <laughs> yep. <laughs> James, you'll have to join us this Christmas. We will. We will. Oh, be oh yeah, sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. It, it was. We'll it was different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love drinking and pronouncing my name right. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So well done. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> oh. Cool. Right, so, I think I think uh, they actually asked a question about airbrushing. Uh, came in late to this. Did you guys discuss your airbrushing? What are your thoughts about it? You briefly touched on it with OSL, didn't you? But... Yeah, I love airbrushing. Again, I think it's one of those myths of miniature painting that you'll buy an airbrush and it will magically make everything all right. Um, airbrushing is actually a very tricky mistress. Um, and you can do everything right and you can have the best one on the market and it will still go horribly wrong. It's a very different skill to master compared to brush painting. Um, and I know amazing airbrush artists who aren't the same as amazing brush artists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people say, oh, airbrushing is cheating. Hmm. Some things are quicker with an airbrush, like base coating. Because I, I just know that I probably still wouldn't be painting if I had to brush base coat everything. Um, but some things are a lot harder, you know, and so I still use a brush for most of my detailing because actually I find that more rewarding and I find it easier to do with a brush. Like, So, um, yeah, I don't think it's cheating at all. I think if anybody thinks a method for getting a good paint job is cheating, they're thinking about painting all wrong. Like, that's not how creative expression works at all. Yeah. Like, um, you know, one of the weathering things that I'll probably be talking about in a couple of weeks is how you can use DIY ingredients from your house to make good weathering. Mm -hmm. So my favorite one is baking soda and super glue. Nice. Costs pennies, makes a really good kind of like crackled, bubbled rust metal effect. Um, is that cheating? Because it's not, it's not, you know, a paint from a pot. 
well, who decided that paint pot painting wasn't cheating? Like, it's crazy. That whole mentality doesn't make sense at all in a in a creative medium. So, um, yeah, I don't think airbrush is cheating. I don't think it's as easy as some people think it is. I yeah, I I've, I've got one. I've yet to. I, I can do it for base coating is fine, yes. but I haven't got the ability yet to do like fine work with it. Yeah, and I think it's sad because a lot of people you know, especially newbie painters who have the cash to invest in one because they are expensive, mm. they'll buy one and then it won't work like the first couple of times. They'll get totally demoralised and they never use it again and it just sort of collects yeah. dust uh, somewhere um, and they just it forever taints their experience airbrushing. Um, so, yeah, they just, they just need kind of a bit of patience and a good teacher to show them how to do it, I think. <laughs> we are about to wrap up everybody so we're just seeing if you've got a last minute question and uh, there you mm. go big tough pete big tough big tough pete uh, have you ever said no to a mini uh, this isn't the same as kind of saying uh, like we said before about um giving up oh you can't even see it when minis disappeared <laughs> just look at it again <laughs> nope <laughs> I got well. I got offered a um, a Storm Raven commission once, Ooh. and I, I I didn't say no, but in my head I was saying no. I politely <laughs> suggested someone else might be more interested in painting it. Um, I just thought, yeah, it's just big big blocks. I didn't think it would be particularly interesting, and it's a huge model and Stormbird, isn't it? The, the really large like Forge World. I can't remember what it's called. Yes, the, Stormbird uh, or Storm Raven. Storm, I think it's a Storm Raven. But yeah, I just thought it wouldn't be fun to paint. You know? Yeah, Storm Raven gunship. My friend has one. Uh, when I first got back into 40k, he just started painting it, and it's still yeah. unpainted. Dave, go finish your Storm Raven, Dave. <laughs> Not that I don't sympathise with you, Dave, because <laughs> I said no <laughs> to that model. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a large bottle with not a lot going on. So um, yeah. I didn't think it would be very rewarding. And commission painting is its own stress. Uh, and so you didn't need the stress of a time constraint of doing something you knew you weren't enjoying. So mm -hmm. I guess that would be my answer. Nice. Well, right, we are going to wrap up there, folks. Um... Yeah. Well, it was really good meeting you, mate. Um... Yeah, you too. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. No, no, that's right. I'm just, I've still got questions coming in. I've got questions over there, questions over there. Um, so, James, thank you very much for, for sharing your time with that. Um, we've gone over the hour just a little bit, but that was all good. Um, everybody, you'll check this out. We'll put it up on our YouTube channel. Uh, Disco, stick the YouTube channel link in the uh, live chat. That's cool. Um, we're going to leave you there. Uh, we have, we'll run back to the Kickstarter trailer for you, so you can check that out. And also the link... Um, to the Kickstarter is just there in live chat as well. So do go check it out. It's a 30% discount uh, once it goes live on the, on the high street or the store. So it's it's really kind of important to save yourself a few quid if you're into it. Mm. If you want to try mm. it, give it a go. The products that we've seen, because James was kind enough to, to send some stuff. Again, we'll be using these in our, uh, in our live streams for our, our brush off show, um, as well as our War Badger show on Sunday afternoons. So check that out. It's actually really, really relaxing, really good fun. Um, I do. I, I, my wife has got me uh, painting the walls, so I'm doing some DIY. So in the background, I've got uh, Joe, Will, and whoever else is on for our War Badger 40K show. Um, and it's just it's a great laugh so Sunday just, afternoon just seen Dave was in his chat the guy who's Storm Raven still isn't unpainted so. oh he's <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go but Shame. we're gonna again James uh, Redgrass thank you so much for joining us uh, we're gonna Pleasure. be seeing James again soon on our brush off show as one of our judges as I mentioned before um, mm. we're gonna leave you with the trailer for the Kickstarter and we'll see you again soon everybody Take care. Bye. Thanks, everyone.